As promised, live from Miami, I have a man with me that has so much history in this uh, hip-hop game, uh, not only in hip-hop, but fashion. Uh, he's one of the biggest trendsetters, trendsetters hip-hop has ever seen. Um, today I am with a man who uh, has been in the game over two decades. Uh, the Puerto Rican, the low life, the general Big Dick Low, also known to all as Thurston Howell III. Thank you for uh, meeting with me today. You already know. I'm here. Uh, for those Tacos is banging. <laughs> no doubt. Just had lunch, having a good time today. Um, for those who may not know him, I'm going to catch you up to speed. And for all the fans out there who've known him but maybe I haven't seen him, he's definitely been working, and we're going to catch you up to what he's been working on. So um, take me back to growing up, early years, uh, Brownsville, Brooklyn. You already know it was crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody who knows the history of Brownsville knows what Brownsville is like. Never ran, never will. So <clears throat> grew up crazy, grew up in the, you know, doing the violent times and all that. But we definitely prospered through art, man, through hip hop, period. That's something that brought everybody I was with together, man, just living in the craziest times, but enjoying it and having fun at the same time. What's your earliest memories uh, of hip hop growing uh, up? I mean, one of my earliest memories is like seeing dudes wearing them British walkers, you know what I mean? The the, the mock necks and, and, and the Kango hats and all that, you know, before I got involved in anything. Just seeing it happen and, you know, being alive around me before I ever intertwined it. Right. Who were uh, some of your influences growing up? Uh, within hip-hop? Right. Wow, it was, um, I mean, it was many, man, as far as artists. Um, like I say all the time, Jimmy Spicer was definitely one of my big influences. He taught me about being a character, you know, like... Being creative with, with your music instead of just being a thug and a gangster all the time. You know, there was so much creativity coming out of Jimmy Spicer, Dana Dane, you know, big inspirations to Thurston Howell becoming a character within the music, you know? I, I definitely follow what they was doing. Right. Uh, you were a part of one of the most influential fashion crews hip hop has ever seen. Uh, a lot of fashion comes and goes, but it seems over the years, polo remains forever. Uh, you can go back and look at the old 80s pics, man, and they flyer than ever. You know, flyer yeah, than yeah. a lot of pics that are... Everybody wants to relive those days in fashion. That's why the vintage clothing is so expensive now, you know, because of the lane we created within the polo. We made those sweaters a $1,000 and better, you know? And Ralph Lauren definitely followed what we did because he was reissuing you know, his lines as he watched the market we created. That was one of my questions. Uh, did Ralph Lauren ever reach out to you guys? I mean, he, he bought five of my books. Is that you know, right? That was about it. He bought five of my books at, at the release and stuff like that. But wow. That's the most involvement he's ever wanted with us. Okay. Does that... How does that make you feel? I mean, did you want more or, I mean, did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish as far as interaction with Ralph? I mean, I never really, I never re was really looking for an interaction, you know? Everything we were doing, we weren't trying to achieve anything. We were just living our lives the way we seemed fit. And that's all we were doing, man. We didn't expect any of this to happen the way it did. We were just living our lives, man. I'm still living my life in the same manner, not really caring who's admiring or who's interested. This is just what I do and this is who I am. And you know, that's how it's always going to be. That's what makes me tick. That's what motivates me, man. You know, I'm inspired by life. Right. My man Nick, Nick Stefani. What low, up, Nick? Low life all day. Uh, can you take me back to how low life all started? Um. You know, this is one of them questions I answered 50,000 times. <laughs> I know. You know, two two groups, the kids coming from different sections of Brooklyn, common cause, you know. It's the best way I could say it. I, everybody was out to get fly by any means necessary. And, uh, you know, we just put it all together and, and built the legacy through that, man. Without even trying. That wasn't our plan. We just living our lives, like I said. This was, was, this was life to us, period. 
Okay, so tell me how you picked up the mic. What at what point? Because I'm sure the low lights were before you MCing, and then you started MCing. Was MCing always part of Thurston House? I mean, I, I always been a hip hop fiend, right? So I've always studied every rapper, whoever came out. I've always listened to the music as as a fiend, like a crackhead for it. Um, I never really knew of the skill I had. But when I was younger, I would play with it here and there, just freestyling. Even times that were recorded. And you know, I look at I look at some of these tapes from when I was 16 years old and I'm like, wow, you know, I always had it. I just wasn't aware, you know? But I didn't pick up the mic till like 96 and when I really picked it up seriously and, and you know, started making it part of my destiny. The hip hop bible back in the day was the source and in 97 you got the unsigned hype. How did that make you feel? I felt like a man. It was crazy when the article came out. I was on Rikers Island. <laughs> so I had to battle everybody in the bathrooms, you know, because they were like, oh, that's the dude from the unsigned hype. So, you know, I had to let it be known it wasn't a game. Did that lead to your record uh, deal with Landspeed? Uh, no, not at all. So unsigned um, hype. Go ahead. No, nah, the unsigned hype. Uh, what it gave me was more recognition. Remember, I was a brand new rapper at this time, so I, I barely had music. I, I think I gave the unsigned hype a demo of like five songs that I did on the four track. But uh, you know, all the other deals and stuff that came into play happened after I was releasing my music consistently. You know, by whatever means I knew how to do so. That's what actually started getting me recognized by labels and being approached by everybody. You not only uh, do music, fashion, uh, at one point in time, you were behind the scenes on MTV? Yeah, I worked at MTV before all of this. Um, started working at MTV like in 90, 94 and the 93. Uh, just started out as a production assistant. Um, as everybody know, I got the job through uh, through like um, this uh, work release facility, you know, people who stepped in and tried to help change the direction my life was going in. And, you know, I remained at MTV, all, you know, throughout the entire 90s and things like that and gained massive knowledge, worked with a lot of people who, you know, like I said, helped change the direction my life was headed in. Um, you really haven't taken a break since you started and came out. Uh, through all the changes that hip-hop goes through in fashion, what keeps you consistent and loyal to yourself and uh, never changing? It's, it's what I feel naturally. You know, a lot of people ask me what made me rap like I did when I became Thurston Howell. And it, it just what came naturally, you know? I didn't, I didn't try to be a character. I wasn't out to have a certain style. Everything is what happened naturally as I, you know, as I involved myself with it. From your debut album till now, how do you think you've uh, changed and progressed? I calmed down a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> what was going on in the earlier? Well, 90, 96, 97. Well, the 96, 97 stuff, I was still yeah. still ignorant and aggressive in an ignorant way. You know, uh, throughout time, I definitely learned about the patience. I learned how to tone it down and, and be a little more civilized, you know, to how I get down and how I approach people and do things like that. You know, plus I've been blessed, man, to have achieved so much. So a lot of that has humbled me. You know, these blessings, I have to be grateful for the things that have happened, you know, and, but, you know, musically, my music has always progressed and elevated, you know, throughout time, because I'm still learning as I'm going along, and I'm still having that same aggressive approach when I'm attacking the music, you know? Do you like this new digital age over how it used to be back in the day, where it's more... You had to do it. I mean, you still do it all yourself, but it was more physical and the hand. I love it all, man, because still, you still got to do it yourself. Just because it's digital now don't mean it magically pops up and it's done for you. Motherfuckers still got to pour your heart into the lyrics, into the writing, into, you know, I believe in evolving when things evolve. Uh, not, not conforming to them, but evolve whatever 